Robin Banks Jr., you are now sentenced to four years in prison. You're never gonna become a news anchor ever again. Without parole. In four years, I'm gonna be back in the business on top. In four years, y'all gonna be giving me props. All right, then you enjoy your time then. Yo, what's up? This is Robin Banks, and I'm calling for your building. It's nice to see you back in Copenhagen, Bill. Thanks, Robin. Nice to see you back from jail. Oh, okay. On another note, we have a special program on bonding and organic chemistry. We'll begin with bonding. We have a special guest to... Did somebody say bond? All right, Mr. Bond, do you mind telling us a little bit about bonds? No problem. Basically, all compounds are composed of elements. Elements form bonds by either giving, taking on, or sharing electrons with other atoms. So why do elements bond and start moving all these electrons around? You see, all elements have different shells of electrons, and the outer shell is most stable when it has eight electrons in it, or two for the first shell. Most elements do not have eight electrons, so they either give, take, or share electrons to have eight in their outer shell. This is called the octet rule. So all this bonding happens so that the individual atoms can have eight electrons in their outer shell? That's correct. So is there a difference between the types of bonds formed, depending on what the atoms do with their electrons in order to fulfill the octet rule? Yes. When a pair of atoms form a bond by one losing electrons and the other gaining, it's called an ionic bond. If they share uh, electrons, it's called a covalent bond. Can you tell me a little bit about both? Take a look at this periodic table. Typically, the elements in the far left two rows, group 1a and 2a, as well as some of the elements in here, lose electrons and form cations in order to bond with some of these elements over here, which will gain electrons and form anions, starting from group 3a and moving right. I see. Is there anything else you can tell me about ionic compounds? Ionic compounds bonds are strong and hard to break. As such, they have high melting points and high boiling points should you find them in an aqueous form. Also, they dissolve easily in water and conduct electricity. Their solid surfaces are much harder than covalent compounds. And what about covalent bonds? Covalent bonding occurs when atoms, instead of transferring electrons, start sharing electrons. See, each atom participating in a covalent bond shares one electron with the other resulting in an increase of one electron in the valence shells of each atom. Atoms might also share two pairs of bonds, making a double bond, or share three bonds, forming a triple. Co uh, covalent compounds have low melting points, boiling points, and they do not conduct electricity and have much harder surfaces than... Sorry. Bond. James Bond. Ah, uh, yes. Alright, extract mm -hmm. three, four, serial, four, two. Wait, wait, wait a second, I, is there anything else about bonding? Well, Robin, it looked like Mr. Bond had to leave early, but we still learned quite a bit from him. We sure did, didn't we? Well, after word from our sponsors, we're going to give you live coverage straight from this year's annual Minesweeper competition. Do you want to be a violin maestro? Then join the Southeastern Music School of Arts and call 1-800-666-8676. Alright, this is Tommy TV, I'm Bud Weiser. I'm in for Robin here in that standing obligation. All right, so we're going to be with the defending champion, Moneymaker. So where is he? Ah, Moneymaker. Wait, is that Robin? Could be one of the Mind Super. Moneymaker, be one of your Mind Super. Hello, sir. We're from Atomic TV. We'd like to ask you a few questions. Yo, what's up, son? So, Moneymaker, how does it feel to be the champion of Mind Super? Yeah, man, feels great. Feels great. But with that comes a lot of practice. Moneymaker be playing Mind Super every day, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You know. That's how you got here. What's your winning strategy? Well, there's one word. That word is hybridization. What's that? Well, hybridization is the forming of different electron cloud shapes when the sublevels of different atoms combine in compounds. All right, all right, take a look here. Take a look here, my friends. All right, let's see. All right, you see here, when two S orbitals combine, they form a sigma bond. Okay. When two P orbitals combine horizontally, you get a P sigma bond as shown here. I understand. However, when two P vertical P pi bonds come together, a pi bond is formed. Okay, that, that's, that's actually really interesting. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Wait, I understand. Could you clarify for me? Alright, let's go back a minute. So these are the shapes of electron clouds of sublevels. Therefore, the hybridized electron clouds indicate the overall shape of a covalent molecule. Okay, that actually makes a little bit sense. Well, there's nothing else to really add. Just remember that the bond association energy is actually the amount of energy that you need to break um, for the compound to break. And it's usually higher for covalent bonds. Do you know why? Why is that? Because it's actually harder to break <laughs> covalent bonds, so therefore it takes more energy 
and it requires more energy. Okay. All right. Well, good luck. Yo, thanks, man. Props. Props. It's your boy Nick Shaker. If you want to be G, if you want to be like me, you gotta be able to rap on the spot. Throw the beat. I got four in my teeth, perfect dentist three. Sitting in the classroom, learning chemistry. Dropping all my info, learning proton by the gallon. Ace and dev test, thank you, Mrs. Allen. Grabbing X, Y axis, mapping out increments. Periodic table, gonna help us with the elements. If you wanna be gangster, like a shaker, visit howtobeagangster.com. Visit here and you gon' be the bomb. Alright, Bill, there's one more type of binding force between atoms that we haven't talked about yet. Really? What, what type of force is that? We're talking about Van der Waal forces. I've got someone here on the line to explain about it. Put him through. This is Justin Case from Atomic TV. I was wondering if you could explain the Van der Waal forces to us. Uh, all right, sure. So basically, there are two types of Van der Waal forces: dipole, dipole interactions and dispersion forces. Dipole interactions are between polar molecules, and they happen when the slightly negative region of a polar molecule is weakly attracted to the positive region of another polar molecule, and vice versa. Dispersion, dispersion forces occur between nonpolar molecules. When moving electrons happen to be momentarily uh -huh. more on the side of a molecule closest to a neighboring molecule, it's a, and its electro, el, electric forces forces influence for forces influence the neighboring molecule electrons to be momentarily on the opposite side. However, this type of bonding is really weak. And then finally, there's hydrogen bonding. Just remember FON, fluor, fluorine, hy, oxygen, and nitrogen. These are the elements hydrogen usually bond to. All right, thank you. All right, now that we've oh. covered... Thank you, man. Now, now that we've covered all the types of bonding, we've got Robin Banks outside ready to explain hydrocarbons. So, listen, I got my pants below my waist and I never dance when I'm in this place because you and your man is planning to hate. I'm so good. Get off the road. Child, child, please. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. All right, I've got Are you it. really the mind super world champion? Oh my uh, god, I have your autograph. Yo, 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 Well, Bill, I've been asking around and I found someone who knows all about hydrocarbons. Well, according to my research from Camden University, first of all, uh, hydrocarbon is a molecule arranged on a chain and composed of only carbon and hydrogen atoms. The carbons form chains that may branch off and the hydrogens fill up all the remaining of the four possible covalent bonds on each hydrocarbon. Hmm. If a carbon happens to fill up one of its bonds oh, right, right. by bonding again to the next carbon, this diagram over here, oh. unsaturated, it does not hold its maximum pacify of hydrogen ions. If all the carbons make sing single bonds only, it is saturated. Unsaturated hydrocarbons are liquid at room temperature, and saturated hydrocarbons are solid. Oh, nice. Thanks, man. I'll, uh... Yo, can you tell me about the different types yeah. of my hydrocarbons? Research. There are three types of hydrocarbons. There are alkanes, alkenes, alkenes and, alkynes. and alkynes. An alkane is a hydrocarbon with only single bonds. Alkenes have single and double bonds, and yes. alkynes can have single, double, and triple bonds all at the same time. And finally, I'd like to say it's been a pleasure to talk to you all tonight, and now I'll introduce the speaker you've all been waiting to hear from, Mr. Robin Bennett! Yeah! Robin, do you agree that there are two main types of isomers, being structural isomers and stereoisomers? Yes, yes I do. And that stereoisomers consist of geometric and optical isomers? Yes, geometric isomers have system trans configurations and they have different orientations around a double bond. Optical isomers differ in the groups attached to them, like an, like an asymmetric carbon, for example. 
Also, is it true that an aromatic compound is an organic compound containing a benzene ring or other cyclic hydrocarbon rings? Yeah, that's right. And aromatic compounds are used in many dyes for coloring or in consumer products like chewing gum, especially like for flavoring. Also, I heard that functional groups are the specific arrangement of atoms in an organic compound capable of characteristic chemical reactions. Is this true? Yes, it is. Functional group is halo carbons, alcohol, <coughs> ethers, esters, and any others. Alright, thanks a lot, Robin Banks! Yeah!